In yesterday's video, we started talking about functions, and we found out how to tell if a relation or a set of ordered pairs was a function. Well, today we're going to find out that there's actually four different ways that you can write a relation or show a relation. There are four different ways. The first way is just like we saw yesterday, looking at ordered pairs. Remember that the question we asked ourselves with ordered pairs was, are the x's different? The second way that you can show a relation is in a table. This just looks different than a list of ordered pairs, but it's really the same because in a table, you can write the ordered pairs. The ordered pairs in this table go sideways because X and Y are right next to each other side to side. So the ordered pairs would be 2, 4, 6, 12, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 5, negative 10. When you have a table, you should write the ordered pairs. After you have the ordered pairs, you can follow the same method we used yesterday. Look at the ordered pairs, circle the x values, and then ask yourself, are the x's different? The third way we can show a function, or a relation, sorry, is in a graph. In a graph, we use something called the vertical line test. In a vertical line test, if you pass the vertical line test, if each line hits, I'm sorry, if no ordered pairs are on the same line, no, or only one point, I like that better, only one point on a line. So in this graph, if I drew a vertical line through that point, a vertical line through that point, a straight vertical line through this point, and a straight vertical line through this point, you'd see that none of the vertical lines go through more than one point, which means that would be a function. We'll look at more graphs later, but I wanted to introduce you to the words vertical line test today. The fourth way that we can show a relation is in a mapping or a map diagram. I'm just going to call it a map. When you have a map, it looks something like this. It kind of looks like a table, except instead of having the x values right across from their matching y values, there are arrows. And again, this one's really hard to see. Um, that was the printer. There are arrows that tell you which x value goes to which y value. So in a mapping diagram, you're going to have to write the ordered pairs as well. So the x value is 2, and its matching y value is 4. 2, 4. The x value is 6, and the y value is 12. The x value is 3, and the y value is negative 6. The y, or sorry, the x value is negative 5, and the y value is negative 10. After you have your ordered pairs, you follow the same steps from yesterday's lesson. You ask yourself, are the x's different? Look at the x values, and then answer the question. Let's do some examples using our new ways to show relations. This first diagram is called a map. In a mapping diagram, you should write the ordered pairs first. So I have the x value 1, and its y value is 1. So I have the ordered pair 1, 1. I have the x value 2, and following one arrow, it has a y value of 2. But following another arrow, it has a y value of 7. 
So that's actually two ordered pairs, 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 7. And then my last ordered pair has an x value of 4. And its matching y value goes to or maps to 3. It's called a mapping diagram because you can see each x value and it maps to its matching y value instead of being straight across from it like in a table. So the ordered pairs are 1, comma 1, 2, comma 2, 4, comma 3, and 2, comma 7. Remember, um, the question we ask, ask ourselves is, are the x's different? So we circle the x values, 1, 2, 4, and 2. Since the x value 2 repeats, this is not a function or a non-function. And that's because x equals 2 repeats. You can visually see that because looking at the x value 2, you have two arrows coming out of it. Looking at the second map, this is a map. If you were to write all of the ordered pairs, you'd have an x value of 3 and 3 maps to a 7. You'd have an x value of 5 and 5 maps to a 7. And then you'd have an x value of 9 and 9 maps to a 7. To determine if ordered pairs, a set of ordered pairs or a relation is a function, you ask yourself, are the x's different? So circle all of the x values, 3, 5, and 9. The x's are different, so the answer would be yes to that question, which means this is a function. So even though all of the y values are the same, because the x values are different, this is a function. In a table, I would recommend rewriting your ordered pairs. You have x and y are next to each other side by side, so your ordered pairs are side by side. 1 comma negative 5, 1 comma 7, 1 comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and here I have another 1 comma 7. Because I've already written that down before, I'm not going to include it in my list again. Now you ask yourself, are all of the x values different? Because I want to know if this is a function. So let's look at just the x values in each of the ordered pairs. Now the x values are not all different. So the answer to the question, are the x's different? is no, which means this is a non-function. And that's because x equals 1 repeats. <clears throat> Looking at the last table, we're going to rewrite our ordered pairs. The ordered pairs in this table are side by side because x and y are side by side. So our ordered pairs are negative 2 comma negative 5, 0 comma 7, 3 comma negative 1, 5 comma 0, and 2 comma 7. We want to know if this set of ordered pairs or this relation is a function. So we circle all of the x values. The x values are negative 2, 0, 3, 5, and 2. That seems a little different. I've got a negative 2 and a positive 2. Well, negative 2 and positive 2 are different numbers. So all of these numbers are different. All of the x's are different which means this is a function. Even though we had two in multiple spots, one of them was negative and one of them was positive. Those are different. 
So this is a function because all of our x's were different. <clears throat> Looking at the next three graphs, you have graphs with a bunch of ordered pairs. You could rewrite the ordered pairs, but remember with graphs, we're going to use something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test. So you're going to draw a bunch of vertical lines through each of the ordered pairs. If a vertical line hits more than one ordered pair, it fails, which means it's a non-function. I'm drawing vertical or straight up and down lines through each ordered pair. So far, each line has just one point. Lines can have one points or no points, but they can't have more than one. Here's another ordered pair, so I'm going to draw a vertical line through it. Here's another ordered pair. I'll draw a vertical line through it. All of the vertical lines that I drew only go through one ordered pair, which means this passes the vertical line test, which means it's a function. This is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Often you'll see vertical line test abbreviated as VLT for vertical line test. Looking at the second graph of ordered pairs, here's an ordered pair, so I'll draw a vertical line through it. That only hits the one ordered pair, so it's okay. Here's another ordered pair. I'm going to draw a line through a vertical line through it. Now this one hits more than one ordered pair, which is not okay. It would fail the vertical line test. Let's keep going. Here's another ordered pair. I'll draw a vertical line through it. And this vertical line, again, hits more than one ordered pair. So it fails the vertical line test yet again. Here's the last ordered pair, and that vertical line's okay. However, since any of the vertical lines have hit more than one dot, this is not a function, or it's a non-function, because it fails the vertical line test, or it fails the VLT, vertical line test, because the middle two lines are both hitting more than one point. More than one point. Looking at the last graph, go ahead and draw vertical lines through each of the ordered pairs on the graph. You'll see that each vertical line only has one ordered pair going through it, which means this does pass the vertical line test. Since it passes the vertical line test, this is a function. This is a function because it passes the vertical line test, the VLT for vertical line. Um, there are other types of graphs that we might have. We might have something with lines instead of dots. When you have a graph with lines, you're going to draw vertical lines going all over the graph. It might be even helpful for you to draw a dot every time a vertical line hits the graph. Every vertical line that you could possibly draw on this graph it is only going to hit the line just once. Since it's only hitting the line one time, this passes the vertical line test, or it passes the VLT, which means this first graph is a function. Looking at the second graph, again, you're going to draw vertical lines from start to finish. You'll notice that in several of these lines, 
the vertical line hits the graph pictured or the line pictured more than once, which means it fails the vertical line test or the VLT vertical line test. Since this fails the vertical line test, this is a non-function. In this last example, I can draw a vertical line here and I can draw a vertical line here. This vertical line only hits the graph once. If I drew one right here, it would hit the line only once. Once I start right here though, I'm hitting the line drawn twice. Each vertical line is hitting the line drawn more than once. Since each vertical line is hitting more than once, this fails the vertical line test or the VLT vertical line test. Since this fails the vertical line test, it's a non-function. That is all of the notes for this page. I don't think I said in the video explicitly, but this is page 73 in your binders. Take a look at page 74, that's the homework for this lesson. In the homework for this lesson, you're seeing um, a lot of different relations. You need to determine if each one is a function or a non-function, and then you need to justify it using a complete sentence. It doesn't have to be a lot of sentences, but it does have to be a complete sentence. Um, I know some of these arrows are really hard to see for the mapping diagrams, so look at number four. Number four, one maps to negative four, three maps to negative four, six maps to negative four, and 13 maps to negative four. Looking at um, number six, negative one maps to one, zero maps to zero, and one goes to the one up there. I didn't realize these were gonna be so hard to see after printing. Looking at number eight, I'll show you where the arrow should be drawn. This one's a little easier to see for some reason. The negative one goes here, and there's an arrow going here and then one goes straight across to the other one. Okay, so your goal is to determine if each of these 10 relations is a function or a non-function. And this is page 75, sorry, 74. Um, again, as always, if you have questions about this lesson or the content, um, feel free to send me a message on Schoology or drop a comment on this video, and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I see the message.